Hey friends! Today's webcast comes from a correspondence I've been having with in Portland who asked for help getting her old historic loot back hurdy-gurdy up and running again. Thanks for joining in. I'm George Leverett and welcome to Hurdy-Gurdy World! One of the most crucial parts of getting the hurdy-gurdy to sound just right is getting the bridge dialed in. Modern hurdy-gurdies have all kinds of adjuster mechanisms designed to make this really easy. However, a historic hurdy-gurdy doesn't have an adjustable bridge. So that's what we're going to cover today. How to dial in a non-adjustable bridge. Before we get started, there are some tools that will be helpful to have on hand that will make this a lot easier. Cotton and rosin, as always a piece of paper and some scissors, and finally a small triangle file. So called a triangle file because it forms a little triangle in its profile. You can get these at any hardware store. When I'm talking about adjusting the bridge, in this case I'm talking about the chanter bridge or the bridge that holds the chanter strings in alignment or your melody strings. Why would this need to be adjusted? Well, these are made of wood and wood shrinks or swells depending on what's going on in the humidity. The strings of a hurdy-gurdy need to touch the wheel with just the right amount of pressure to sound their best. However, the bridge here that holds them in alignment, if it's really humid, it could swell actually lifting the strings right off the wheel. Other times of year, it could shrink a little bit, putting the strings too heavy on the wheel. We're going to show you how to correct for that. The first step is to make sure your strings are turned on. Uh, different hurdy-gurdies have different mechanisms for that. The hurdy-gurdy I'm using is one of mine that I built and I've got little rotating cams so I'll just lower them here. In this scenario we'll say what happens when the bridge has swollen a little bit and now the strings don't even touch the wheel. I slid the cotton off to the side for this operation which you should do too. You can tell I'm cranking the wheel, no sound. So how do I fix that? This is probably the scariest part of this whole operation, but it's really not too bad. I'm going to use my triangle file. I'm going to adjust the notches that hold the strings in alignment. I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll pick this string. So I'll lift this one right off the wheel. So the string should just kiss the wheel when there's no cotton. However, since I'm not touching, I have to lower it onto the wheel. I'm going to do that by filing out the notch. This is pretty easy but there's a couple of things you want to watch out for. Move the string off to the side. You, if we nick the string it could break it and with gut strings they can be a little spendy. Basically I, I just file away. And then test it. This is going to be a lot of back and forth. Just do a little at a time. This is really as easy as it looks. It, it's scary because you're doing something that will be permanent on your hurdy-gurdy, but it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the only thing you should be aware of when you file, hopefully you can see I'm having my file at an angle like this, sloping away from the wheel. You want to be sure to do that. So you have a firm contact point at this edge of the bridge, but then the slot kind of slopes back. That'll ensure that your intonation stays correct. There we go. Before we do any testing or move along, now we're going to do the same thing to the other string. Alright, we got that dialed in. The other scenario we're going to cover is when the strings are too heavy on the wheel. Let's say your bridge has shrunk a little bit and now the strings sound really harsh and awful. To get this dialed in, we slide the cotton out of the way and we test the string. I'll just turn on one of my strings here, which in this case is this one. And the way you test it, just play it with your highest most buttons. 
if, if it sounds pretty reasonably good all the way up at the highest pitch part of your scale, the rest of the scale will be fine. Now we hear how that's kind of harsh and very unpleasant. That's because after I filed it, this string's a little too heavy on the wheel. Although in your case, you might not have filed it at all, and it just is too heavy on the wheel because the bridge shrank. Whatever the reason, we're going to show you how to fix that. The tools for this are our scissors and our piece of paper. I'm going to cut a little fold of paper here, which looks like this for the sake of being manageable. And I'm going to tuck it in the groove between the string and the groove to raise the string just that tiny little bit. This can take a little dancing to get it just right. See, I've wrapped it around the string. I lift the string. Now slide it in position. And let's test it. It sounds better. You can keep noodling with this by adding more and more shims. That's what this is called, the shim. Or taking them away until you get it just right. Sometimes it might take two or three folds of paper all at the same time to get it lifted just right. To really test it, I'm going to slide my cotton back in place. Alright, it's playing nice reasonable notes all the way up the scale, so I'm going to call this string done. I'm going to go to my other string and test it as well. In this case, it sounds pretty good, so I'm not going to shim this. I'll just slide the cotton under, on it to, to be safe, just to, so I know exactly what's going on. And there we go. Again, one string might use one or two shims, another string might need zero, or they both might need uh, one or several shims. So that's how you get your bridge dialed in. Hopefully this was helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time, which will be mid-July, our next episode cycle we're going to take off for the 4th of July. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you then.